today we will uh, start with the lesson two in our project with the K Talk uh, season three. Uh, and our host today is Dr. Uh, Dr. Lee Yong Ming. Uh, he will start with the very important and very like um, uh, standing out about what we can do about uh, taking medical history with the uh, soft note. And then he can help us to uh, take, uh, call, uh, how can to take uh, the medical history and how can we make it uh, good and how can we, uh, we do in specific. So welcome to Dr. Leong. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thung. Uh, as you guys know, um, my, well, let's start with the introduction in case nobody knows who I am. Uh, my name is Dr. Leon Nguyen. I'll be your host for today. Uh, this is the second lecture on your journey uh, to the case talk, final destination. Um, before you start, uh, a little background about myself. I'm a resident physician currently practicing family medicine at Health Point. I'm also a hospitalist at Multicare Auburn North. Um, in case uh, you guys don't know where it is, is in Washington State, United States. So, a um, little bit about why the soap note is important. It is an important document. Uh, in USA, uh, when we practice medicine, this is important that we have something to prove to the insurance. Hey, this is what we do. This is the what we talk to the patient this is what the patient talking about this is their complaint and this is how we address this in the document uh we can we can you we used to write stuff out but uh, nowadays with the involve of the electrical medical record it is so easy to uh, keep track of everything we do and uh, with the electrical medical record. Uh, today I will show you a standardized way that everyone write their soap notes and how they write it. Um, but be mindful that each physician have a different way of writing their soap notes and each people write it differently and everyone may have different style and your hospital may have different way. But uh, for case talk purposes, we will use um, the way that I introduced today. Okay, uh, so far, any question? Okay, uh, no question. Yes, one question. Uh, okay, that's not a question. Uh, Jam, did you have a question? I saw you raise your hand. No, no, I just switched the screen. Uh, okay, so that's not a question. Okay, all right. Uh, Jay, uh, you have a PowerPoint uh, that you can bring it up to the roof. Yeah. One second. One second, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, so, welcome to case talk number three. Okay, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? So, uh, this is your final training. So, after today is the real thing. Okay, you're gonna start seeing SP and then do soap note and then present with a plan and everything that fun. So today lecture may be a little bit fast uh, and it's kind of dry because I will do most of the talking. Um, but starting next week, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so next, oh soap note, yay! We have to be amazed at how good our animation team and these people working in the background is just, they're so amazing of design all this and i'm terrible at making powerpoint if you see my powerpoint it's just like a one blank space with words and like this look boring this looks so interesting okay so definition of the soap note is a method that employed by healthcare provider which is us to document what happened in the patient chart. It's really widely used in most hospitals in the USA. It's used for multiple purposes. It's used for billing purposes. 
is used to show the patient what we're doing it in case they request the record is used to communicate between physicians okay and sometimes in rare occasions a patient sue you to court is also used to prove that you provide a standard of care and avoid compensation and go to jails and stuff like that okay uh next slide one moment i think uh yeah okay okay G, uh, it's okay uh, Tung will share the, the thing oh it's so beautiful everything's beautiful i mean so subjective well the the sub note technically stand for whatever you write for so the sub note have four portions the s stand for subjective the O stand for objective the A and P is assessment and plan okay that's that's the that's the shortcut why we call the soap note so the subjective portion is where people document the patient cheap complaints usually you also including a HPI in this section so throughout the PowerPoint we will write one soap note together on one of my patients that I just saw last week okay so uh, we will go through like what you put in each section so this is where you put the patient chief complaint you put the patient own words okay so like if they come in hello uh doctor so and so uh, uh, how can i help you today you ask the patient that and they say well i have some neck pain okay you will write in a sub note patient is blah 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 63 years old blah 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 come in for the cheap complaint of neck pain and then one important thing you want to ask the patient and i tell all my medical students and people this that you're not stopping at what can i help you today you have to ask what else okay because patient will definitely not come in with one complaint this is, uh, this is a good technique to explore everything that patients want to talk about. You have to ask about what else, okay? Now what else? So besides the neck pain, what else are you here for? Oh, um, I'm here to manage my diabetes. What else? You have to keep asking until they're running out of the list, okay? It's a very powerful technique to keep asking the patient, what else? I know, uh, I know that we have a tendency to hey, uh, her stopping at neck pain and that's it. Now, patient usually will be there more than one reason. And if you don't ask, and by the end of the visit, when you address the neck pain, and then they start saying something like, "Oh, hey, doctor, I also need my medication refill." Well, now you stuck at the position of where okay do i address this refill problem or not okay do i talk about this problem or not but it's already the end of the visit this will be really awkward to be like okay uh why didn't you tell me about that earlier well because you didn't ask stuff like that right so after each complaint that the patient tell you you ask what else until the patient running out of things to say first okay well for the case talk purposes all of our standardized patients will only have one or two complaints so uh, but in real life this is really helpful in real life so what we're teaching you what we're showing you is tips to be successful in real life as well not just to be successful in case talk okay um so after they running out of the cheap complaints um, this is not in the slide okay this is my tips you negotiate with the patient what do you want to do for that day because of course we physician we're very busy and every visit we have a limited amount of time to talk about the cheap complaints so we want to address their most concerning problem okay so we'll say something like okay i understand that you have neck pain you need medication refill you also have shoulder pain 
uh, blah blah blah, like five different problems. But what is your most concerning problem that you want to talk about today? You ask the patient that question, and then they will tell you, "Oh, okay, my neck pain bothering me so much, so I want to talk about that today." And then you tell them, "Oh, good. Okay, let's talk about your neck pain today." Okay, so now we're gonna start addressing the neck pain. And then you tell them, "Okay, uh, since we don't have enough time, let's talk about the second most concerning problem." Usually, I, I address at least two for their visit. Um, so every visit, I address at least two of their problem. If they only have one problem, then I add my problem in, because you know um, I also manage patient diabetes and everything. So I want to make sure that uh, I got all the preventive care. In, so I usually say like, "Oh, uh, Mr. John, uh, I also saw that that you are due for your pneumococcal vaccine. Um, also, uh, did you get your COVID vaccine yet?" You start adding your concern with the patient in as well. So the very first five minute or two minute of the visit is very important because that's when you set up. The the expectation for the encounter, you have to be in control of the encounter. You don't let the patient control you about what they want to do. Okay, it's very important as a physician to lead the patient in the encounter. You asking question. Okay, so this is just a couple of side notes so you can practice in real life. So again, to sum up. Asking the patient, "How can I help you today?" or "What is your concern um, that you want to address today?" and then "What else?" "What else?" until the patient running out of the list, and then you pick one or two complaint that you want to talk about with the patient. Okay. Now the XVI is uh, is like standard thing. I think too. I checked her slide. I saw that too. Did go over this with you guys. Um, it's those uh, mnemonic thing where you say onset and stuff like that. That is your HPI. Onset, palliative uh, things, uh, provocative things, timing and stuff like that. Okay, but uh, we will talk about it uh, during the talk today as well. If your patient is a new patient, everything should be included in the subjective as well, like past medical history, social history, family history. Those should be included in your subjective, because subjective means that what the patient tell you, okay, okay, and review system as well, like fever, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, stuff like that. Okay, this is where the patient tell you. Okay, I kind of run through it real fast. So any questions so far? And if I'm talk too fast. You can stop me anytime. Okay. No question. Everybody clear? Did, did did you guys hear me well? Uh, why do we go backward? Okay. All right. Subjective and XPI. Let's start one. Okay. So let's say uh, our patient is John Doe, come in today with shoulder pain and diabetes management. His last PCP is Dr. Conte, but he that Dr. Conte is already retired for a year. Okay, this is the very first line of the subjective. Okay, so this is everybody should write this. Like John Doe is age, cheap complaints. And the last time they visit the primary care physician, PCP is primary care provider or primary care physician. Okay. Uh, I don't know about uh, how the Vietnam system work, but over here everybody have a primary care physician. Okay. The reason why we ask that is we want the old medical record of the physician. You know, because everybody keep patient medical record, and we want to know that what are these PCP doing 
to the patient before they come to you. Okay, this is very important because what if you add on the medication that the other physician already did? Okay, it's like you double something. Okay, so usually in the very first visit, we either tell the patient to bring their record with them or our hospital and our clinic will take care of that. Usually, uh, I don't have to worry about it because uh, when a patient schedule an appointment with me, um, my hospital and and uh, the um, the clinic taking care of the background document like that. But I still have to ask, like when was the last time you visited your primary care provider? Okay, just in case I want to do more labs and stuff like that, so I don't have to waste patient money if they already did the lab. I don't have to waste the patient money to repeat the lab because lab is expensive. So we have John Doe, 55 years old male patient, new patient come in for shoulder pain and diabetes management. His last PCP is Dr. Conte who has retired one year now. So after you write that line, what I'm doing is I put their complaints in that and then I start doing bullet point because I feel like okay it's shorter that way and it's it's better for me visual in terms of visual I can see what they want really okay so I separate into shoulder pain and diabetes okay shoulder pain now you start asking the patient when did this start okay I start one week ago how did it start or is, does this start suddenly? Does it start abruptly? Or does it just start? Okay, patient time. Oh, it's abrupt onset. Does mean it start like kind of suddenly. Where does it where does it hurt? It's hurt my left shoulder. Okay. So that's why you start writing. Start about one week ago, abrupt onset on left shoulder. And then you ask the patient, okay, uh, did you do anything for it? How, how did you manage the pain? Okay, I take ibuprofen 400 milligrams for pain. What else? Okay, here's a what else is important because maybe patients just tell you one thing and they don't tell you what else are they doing for pain. You have to keep asking what else. See, that's why what else is a very important word to tell the patient because it's reveal everything. What else? Oh, I, I sometimes use cocaine for pain. Okay. What else do you use for pain? Any other thing that you use for pain? Oh, I also use ice for pain. And then, like, when they are running out of things to say it again, and then you ask, did they help? And say, some patient will say, no, it's not helping at all. And some will say, oh, it's helped somewhat. Okay, you, you type in, help somewhat. Whatever the patient tells you, you write it down. You don't change it. Sometimes you can change regular word to medical word, but that's it you don't add anything or change anything okay it's like okay and then what triggered the pain you ask the patient what triggered the pain okay it's hurt when i bring my hand up like this okay well then you write it in it's hurt when patient move the shoulder inflection okay well you can add inflection or you can just say it's hurt when the shoulder bring his hand up something like that is okay too you don't have to use medical term you can just use regular terms as well but a patient complain okay moving the shoulder inflection and extension hurt to make the pain get worse okay how would you like to rate your pain on a scale from 8 to 10 when 8 when 10, 10 is the worst pain you ever feel and 0 is uh, 1 is no minimal pain patients say like oh it's it's kind of like at the eight when it worse and then it's five when it's getting better okay good you type that down and then you ask the patient well um how 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 did you describe the pain okay is the pain sharp is the pain dull is the pain like wax and wane okay and then the patient will tell you pain is wax and wane Wax and wane mean it's kind of like stay there all the time. Sometimes it's come and go, stuff like that. Okay. 
And as a patient, important. Does does the pain go anywhere, or just stay there? No, just stay there. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay, type in does not radiate anywhere. And then uh, they will probably tell you, uh, or you have to ask like, do you have any nausea, vomiting, or anything with the pain, fever, or stuff like that? And then they will say no, it's not associated with anything. And you put in denies any associated symptoms. Okay. It is very important in any shoulder pain or musculoskeletal pain patient to ask the history of trauma. Okay, uh, I don't know. If you guys know that you guys probably know this already, but usually history of trauma will reveal a lot of things. But in this patient, he he has no history of trauma. So that's good. There's no trauma to the shoulder, so we can rule out a lot of things um, from your differential already. So that's good. So that's the shoulder pain. Um, I may do things differently than what Doctor Tu write in her PowerPoint, but it's still the same format. Okay, so it's very similar, but again, uh, pain complaints. Uh, onset where the pain is okay how does it start what do you do for the pain what make the pain worse does the pain go anywhere and how do you rate the pain and then history of trauma okay there's a format for asking all of that and you'd be surprised uh, I, I kind of like how everything systematically nice to have but sometimes it's helping sometimes it's not but find a system that works for you and stick to it the system worked for me I'll stick to it and that's how I get most of my patient history okay history is the most important thing that you can get from the patient it's even better than any other treatments or diagnostic tests History is important. If you don't have history, you don't know 80% of the story of what's going on. So it's always good to spend time on collecting patient history. Okay. Okay. And then you start going to the diabetes. You ask the patient, okay, how's your diabetes going? One patient says he's doing fine. And then you start doing some medical medicine like medication reconciliation which means that you check on what medication patient taking okay is also part of social history as well but uh, asking did you take anything for your diabetes oh i'm on metformin twice a day it's like how much metformin a thousand most patients won't know so it's sad but oh i am on, on metformin but i don't remember the dose Oh, how, how often you take it? Twice a day. Okay. Do you have any side effects with the metformin? No, I don't have any side effects with the metformin. Have any abdominal pain or something? Dizziness? Stuff like diabetes complication, you kind of know, so to ask. But if they don't have anything concerning about diabetes, you don't write anything down. You can just write that. And I don't have any lab done for you. Okay, then let's do some lab today okay yeah next slide so that's all the subjective and xbi it's about any question on these if you have question ask i'll answer right away no question okay next slide let's go in keep going it's another beautiful slide as always so then you start asking the patient to review a system and you kind of want to go over at least like five system or three at least you can remind yourself going from top to toe that's what i usually do okay so i'll ask patient any fit sorry any fever no any weight loss or weight gain no nausea vomiting no chest pain palpitation no Shortness of breath, cough, wheezing, no. Muscle weakness, dizziness, or headache, no. So I kind of like hit like five system. 
because insurance kind of want me to do five system at least I know it's pain but yeah but you should only put like your pertinent positive and pertinent negative in here what you think is important okay a patient coming in with shoulder pain of course you're not gonna ask him uh how's your uh uh, do you have any pain when you go pee or something like that? That's not relevant to shoulder pain, right? Well, maybe it is, but like patient with chlamydia may have knee pain, shoulder pains, and problem with uh, problem with urinary tract infection, stuff like that. But I mean, but you you pick what you you think is important. Okay, in this case, uh. I don't think patient have chlamydia, so I don't ask about the urinary symptoms. But uh, I think you should, because patient is 55. What if he got some prostate issues? By asking like, okay, um, do you have any problem with going to the bathroom? Do you feel like you want to go to the bathroom all the time? Something like that. You kind of like asking those questions also help with prostate stuff, okay? Everybody know what prostate is, right? You know what prostate is? BPH, you know, B9 prostate hypertrophy, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the rest of the review system is negative. Uh, I did ask everything, but I just don't document all of it because it will be kind of wasting my time to document all of that. So I only document what is like, okay, related to the chief complaint and I think it's important to document heart and lungs review system. Okay. And then the rest of the review system negative. Yeah, that's very straightforward. Here's a whole list. Uh, you can memorize it, but I definitely don't recommend doing that because this list should be accessible everywhere. You can keep this during your patient encounter. It's totally fine so um, in my uh, hospital I have the electrical medical record that have all of this so I can just click on those it's very convenient so it's just me okay but here's everything every system that you can possibly think of and what kind of question you can ask okay so do you have any pain swelling all right here come the past medical history I have a mnemonic for this section, it's called SMASH. Okay, uh, can you can you show everything? Can you show everything? Good, yeah. It's mnemonic called SMASH. It's just the letter, first letter of everything that I asked the patient about in their past medical history. So first I asked about, okay, do you have any medical problem like diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia okay patient will not know what they have you know you'd be surprised I asked 10 of my patients none of them know what they have okay so I have to bring out specific condition that I'm concerned about the diabetes hypertension high cholesterol any history of cancer in your family stuff like that medications what you take this is all the patient medication you should list them out if possible if not then it's okay for the purpose of case talk we will not give you a lot of medication but, uh, because i have my nurse doing this for me so use but i still have to check back with the patient with the patient you know it's always good to do that Ask the patient what allergy they have, just in case. Uh, and then ask what kind of reaction is, is there when you take this medication. Like, okay, I have allergy to penicillin. Okay, what is the reaction when you take penicillin? Oh, I have a rash. Oh, okay, what kind of rash? Stuff like that. Patient may have Steven Johnson syndrome and we don't know about it. Okay, have you had any surgery in the past? Yes, uh, no, no, I actually don't have any surgery. Okay, good. Uh, any hospitalization? You've been in the hospital before? No, no, okay, yeah. 
very straightforward section. You can remember by mnemonic smash. That's the past medical history. Okay, and then you go to family history, social history. All right, family history. You have to ask three generations. Father, parents, brother, and siblings, sisters, and then kids. Okay, so is your father die? Are their parents still living? That's the first thing you ask. Because you want to know like, if they're living and if they're not, you say, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, what do they pass away from? Okay, my father passed away from lung cancer. Okay, I watch A, does he pass away? 77. Your mother, what about your mother? What does she pass away from? Oh, she passed away from a heart attack. Okay, what's A, does she pass away, you know? Pass away at 75. All right, well, then, then you ask, do you have any siblings? Well, I have one sister. Does, does your siblings healthy? Oh, she has diabetes. Okay. Any other siblings? No. Do you have any kids? Well, I have one daughter. Okay. Uh, how old is your daughter? She's 15. Is she healthy? Yes, she healthy. All right. Social history. This is where the fun part comes in. So, do you smoke? No, I don't smoke. Do you use, do you vape? Okay, nowadays there's a vaping thing. We have to ask because patient may not smoking, but they vape. <laughs> That's count. So you have to ask. Okay, do you vape? Oh no, I don't vape. Okay. Now you ask about drinking. Do you use any alcohol? No, I don't. You can be more personal and say, did you drink any beers or wine in the weekends or? during the day. Okay, what about drugs? Did you use any drugs? Okay, I use cocaine once a week uh, for my shoulder pain. What else? Did you use any IV drugs? Surprisingly, patients don't know the difference between drugs and IV drugs, but they don't want to tell you about that, so you might want to ask, use any IV drugs? Okay, yeah, uh, I don't use any IV drugs. Okay, good. Uh, what about your job? Do you work anywhere? Are you still working or are you retired? I'm still working. Okay, well, what's your job? I'm a Boeing manager. So I am a manager at Boeing company. Uh, I, and then you ask about a job. Are you on your feet all the time? Do you do any heavy lifting at your job? Yeah, I'm on my feet all the time and sometimes I lift heavy stuff. Cool. Note that. Maybe the cost of a shoulder pain. Who knows? Ask about marriage. Are you married right now? Or do you have a partner? Okay. Some people marry. Some people have a partner. You have to ask. Okay. Yes. Uh, I feel safe. At, ask them. Do you feel safe at home? Yes. I feel safe at home. Yeah. If they not. No. That's a whole different story. But we won't go into that. Because it's very complicated if they say they're not too safe at home. But for the simply purposes, all of our patients will feel safe at home. Sometimes they won't, but we'll talk about that when it's come. You asked oh, about... Think... Yes. Excuse me, can I have a question here? Can I have a question here? Yeah. Excuse me, can you hear me? Well, um, can you explain me more about this occupation? Boeing manager on feet all the time with heavy lifting? Actually, I don't know that means. So which means the patient is a manager as the Boeing company, you know, where they make airplane, Boeing. Boeing is like a brand of airplane. I just put it in. Yeah, so. And they on their feet all the time because I want to know the patient like actually walking around doing any like heavy work and then I asked them do you lift heavy stuff at your work I say yeah I live a lot of heavy stuff yeah okay and then you note it in okay so I put just put in Boeing managers on feet all the time with heavy lifting or you can put manager at Bowen 
on feet all the time with heavy lifting. This is real patient history, by the way. So this is what I write in my notes. So I just write it there for you guys. Does that answer your question? Kind of like um, the, the level of, uh, I don't get it on feet all the time. It's kind of like the patient. Uh, yeah, it's like patient activities that work. Ah, yes. The, Sometimes the like activity you know, of that work. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they just sit on the table all the time, you know, work with their hands. So like, okay, I'm a manager. Maybe I'll, I'll sit on my chair all the time or I'm a doctor. I sit on my chair all the time and I don't move around. So stuff like that. On feet all the time mean that they constantly walking around and being active. Okay, maybe I should be more specific, but the patient told me, oh, he on feet all the time. So yeah. So later, if he come in with knee pain, then I know that he may have some issue at his work as well. It's important. Okay, thanks, I get it. No worries. Okay. Uh, sexually active. You usually start this conversation by saying something like, I ask this question to all of my patients. Uh, it's okay if you don't want to answer, but I'm just going to ask anyway. Uh, are you sexually active? So, well, no, I'm not sexually active. Sometimes they say the reason. Oh, because my shoulder hurt. I can't do anything. Good. Well, sorry to hear that, of course. Uh, we will help you with your shoulder as much as we can, okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sometimes if they say yes, you have to ask like, okay, uh, are you prefer male or female or something like that? Because if they don't tell you who they sexually active with, you have to ask. Because you don't know that you have to ask about their sexual reference. Like, okay, what's your sexual reference? Do you prefer a male partner, female partner, or both? Something like that. You you will be surprised. Some of my male patients. Oh, I have a male partner. Okay. Uh, now we have to talk about HIV and stuff like that. That's a bunch of stuff that's why the new patient visit is so long because a lot of things to talk about okay next slide 